Good day, everyone. I am Rose D. Banda. Um, my assigned topic is all about <coughs> observation and interviewing. Learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, students must be able to A. Explain what is meant by the term observational research. B. Describe at least four different roles an observer can take in a qualitative study. C. Explain what is meant by the term participant observation non-participant observation, and naturalistic observation. D. Describe what a simulation is and how it might be used by a researcher. E. Explain what is meant by the term observer effect and observer bias. F. Describes the type of sampling that occurs in observational research. G. Describe briefly the four types of interviews qualitative research use. H. Explain what a key actor is. I list at least three expectations that exist for all interviews. J explain what a focus group is. K described briefly why an informed consent is needed in an interview research. And L give at least uh, four procedures qualitative researchers use to check on or enhance validity and reliability in qualitative studies. <clears throat> what is an observational research? An observational research is used to refer to several different types of non-experimental studies in which behavior is systematically observed and recorded. The goal of observational research is to describe a variable or set of variables. <clears throat> Observation helps solve business problems. It will help you research and work out what problem is. For example, no, if a certain company experiences a decline in sales, when they conduct observational research, they might discover that there is reduced brand awareness in the market. There are four different roles of an observer in qualitative study. One is a complete observer. This is a detached observer where the researcher is neither seen nor noticed by the participants. It is one way of minimizing the Hawthorne effect as participants are more likely to act natural when they do not know they are being observed. The role of a complete observer is just that. A role at the opposite extreme from the role of a complete participant. The researcher observes the activities of a group without in any way participating in those activities. The, su the subjects of the researcher's observations may or may not realize they are being observed. Number two is observer as participant. Now in this role, the researcher has only minimal involvement in the social setting being studied. There is some connection to the setting, but the observer is not naturally and normally part of the social setting. The third one is the participant as observer. Here, the researcher is fully engaged with the participants. The researcher gains access to a setting by, by virtue of having natural and non-research reason for being part of the setting. As observer, they are part of a group being studied. The fourth one is the complete participant. Uh, the complete participant is fully embedded researcher. It is almost like a spy. Here, the observer fully engaged with the participants and partakes in their activities. When a researcher takes on the role of a complete participant, his identity is not known to any of the individuals being observed. The researcher interacts with members of the group as naturally as possible and for all intents and purposes, as far as they are concerned, is one of them. What is a participant observation? It is an approach to data collection in which researchers become active participants in the group or situation they are studying. In participant observation studies, researchers actually participate in the situation or setting they are observing. And then the non-participant observation. It is a research technique whereby the researcher watches the subject of his or her study with their knowledge, but without taking an active part in the situation under scrutiny. In non-participant observation study, researchers do not participate in the activity being observed, but rather sit on the sidelines and watch. They are direct they are not directly involved in the situation they are observing. And then, what is a naturalistic observation? 
Now, it involves observing people's behavior in the environment in which it typically occurs. A method where you record the behavior of your research subjects in the real world settings. Um, in naturalistic observation, the researcher makes no effort whatsoever to manipulate variables or to control the activities or individuals, but simply observes and records what happens as things naturally occur. What is a simulation studies? Now, to investigate certain variables, the researchers sometimes will create a situation and ask subjects to act out or simulate certain roles. The researcher, in effect, actually tells the subjects what to do, but not how to do it. This permits a researcher to observe what happened in certain kinds of situations. An example of simulation studies is a fire drill. Now, it reenacts the real-world scenario of a fire in a building or an environment with the purpose of teaching appropriate actions in the event a real fire is encountered. Now, the purpose of these simulation studies is to obtain empirical results about the performance of statistical methods in certain scenarios as opposed to more general analytic results, which may cover many scenarios. The main disadvantage in simulation study is their artificiality. Situations are being acted out, and there is no guarantee that what the researcher sees is what would normally occur in the real life. And then, observer effects. Observer effects is also sometimes referred as Hawthorne effect. The presence of an observer can have a considerable impact on the behavior of those being observed and hence on the outcomes of the study. The observational data that which the observer records inevitably to some extent reflects the biases and viewpoints of the observer. There is always a problem of reactivity in observational research. Getting around the reactivity problem involves staying around long enough to get people used to the observer's presence. There are two things can happen, particularly if an observer is unexpected. One thing is he or she is likely to arouse curiosity and result in a lack of attention to the task at hand, thus producing other than normal behavior. The second thing is the behavior of those who are being observed might be influenced by the researcher's purpose. An observer bias. See, it is also called experimenter effects or detection bias. It refers to the possibility that certain characteristics or ideas or observers may bias what they see. Over the years, qualitative researchers have continually had to deal with the charge that it is very easy for their prejudices to bias their data. But this is something with which all researchers must deal. It is probably true that no matter how hard observers try to be impartial, their observations will possess some degree of bias. Uh, no one can be totally objective, as we all are influenced to some degree by our past experiences, which in turn how, how we see the world and the people within it. Nevertheless, all researchers should do their best to become aware of and try to control their biases. There are types of sampling in observational studies. One is a simple random sampling. It is probably the most intuitive form of random sampling. It is when the researcher randomly selects a subset of participants from a population. Each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Data is then selected from a large percentage as possible of the random subset. The second one is the stratified sampling. In this sampling, researchers divide subjects into subgroups called strata based on the characteristics that they share. Once divided, each um, subgroup is randomly sampled using another probability sampling method. Third one is the cluster sample. 
it is much like a two-stage simple random sample. We break up the population into many groups called clusters. Then sample a fixed number of clusters and collect a sample within each cluster. Then randomly select among those clusters to form a sample. Interviews. This is an interview is the second method used by a researcher to collect data. It is a qualitative research method that relies on asking questions in order to collect data. It involves two or more people, one of whom is the interviewer asking the questions. This can either be one-to-one -one in the form of questionnaires or the more recent form of asking questions in the internet. Um, it is an important way for a researcher to check the accuracy of to verify or refute the impressions he or she has gained through observation. Fetterman describes interviewing as the most important data collection technique a qualitative researcher possesses. The purpose of the interview is to find out what is on the mind of the respondents, what they think, or how they feel about something. Um, there are types of interviews, one of which is the structured. No, structured interviews, this is a kind of verbally presented questionnaire. In structured interviews, a list of predetermined questions is asked to the respondent. The questions are not altered during the interview and no follow-up questions are asked to get an explanation and a given answer. Second one is the unstructured interviews. This is the most flexible type of interview. The questions and the order in which they are asked are not set. Instead, the interview can proceed more spontaneously based on the participant's previous answer. The third one is the informal interviews. They are much less formal than in structured and semi-structured interviews. This is the most common type of interview in qualitative research. They do not involve any specific type or sequence of questions or any particular form of questioning. They tend to resemble casual conversations during uh, pursuing the interest of both the researcher and the respondent in turn. The um, informal interview do not involve any specific type or sequence of questions or any particular form of questioning. The primary intent of an uh, inter informal interview is to find out what people think and how the views of one individual compare with those of another. The fourth one is the retrospective interviews. Uh, this type of interview can be structured semi-structured or informal. A researcher who conducts retrospective interviews tries to get a respondent to recall and then reconstruct from memory something that has happened in the past. A retrospective interview is the least likely of the four interview types to provide accurate, reliable data for the researcher. The key actor interviews. Some people in any group are more informed about the culture and history of their group, as well as more articulate than others. Such individuals, traditionally called key informants, are especially useful sources of information. Fetterman prefers the term key actors to avoid the stigma attached to the term informant. Key actors are especially knowledgeable individuals and thus often excellent sources of information. The interviewing behavior, some set of expectations that exist for all interviews. One is the respect the culture of the group being studied. Two, respect the individual being interviewed. Three, be natural. Four, develop an appropriate report with the participants. Ask the same questions in different ways during the interview. Then ask the interviewee to repeat an answer or statement when there is some doubt about the completeness of a remark. <clears throat> Six, 
vary who controls the flow of communication. Number seven, avoid leading questions. Eight, do not ask dichotomous questions. That is, questions that permit a yes, no answer when you are trying to get a complete picture. Number nine, ask only one question at a time. Do not interrupt. And then what is a focus group interview? A focus group interview brings together a group of participants to answer questions on a topic of interest in a moderated setting. In focus group interview, the interview asks a small group, group of people, usually four to eight, to think about a series of questions. The participants are seated together in a group and get to hear one another's responses to the questions. Often, they offer traditional comments beyond what they originally had to say once they hear the other responses. They may agree or disagree. Consensus is neither necessary nor desired. The object is to get at what people really think about an issue or issues in a social context where the participants can hear the views of others and consider their own views accordingly. The Ethics in Interviewing the necessity for informed consent. What is an informed consent? An informed consent provides detailed information allowing participants an informed, voluntary, and rational decision to participate in the study. Knowing the purpose of the study, how long it will last, the procedures involved, and details outlined in informed consent. The purpose of informed consent is to obtain, to assure the researcher that the participant knows every aspect of their participation in the trial, what procedures to look like, and the potential outcome, including the benefits and the risk. Megan Hosley, 2021. The informed consent, no, participants deserve to be protected from such vulnerability. Furthermore, interviewers also need to be protected against any misunderstanding on the part of the participants as to the nature and purpose of the interview itself. The procedures used to check on validity and reliability in research studies. One is using a variety of instruments to collect data. Two, checking one informant's description of something against another informant's description of the same thing. Three, learning to understand and where appropriate, speak the vocabulary of the group being studied writing down the questions asked in addition to the answers received. Five, recording personal thoughts while conducting observation and interviews. Six, asking one or more participants in the study to review the accuracy of the research report. Then seven, obtaining an individual outside of the study to review and evaluate the report. Eight, documenting the sources of remarks whenever possible and appropriate. Nine, documenting the basis for inferences. And ten, interviewing individual more than once. Okay, that's all my report. Thank you and God bless everyone.